Hi kids, I'm Old Rotten Lady, future internet grandma, and today we are doing a build of a community lounge using only the luxury party stuff pack and the base game. If you're curious about my overall review, which includes an overview of the Create a Sims assets, check out my previous review of the Sims 4 luxury party stuff pack, which will be here. And without further ado, let's get into the speed build. So I decided to build this lounge in New Crust. The first thing that I wanted to do was take a look at the rooms that came with the pack that were already built in. We have an indoor party set and an outdoor garden set. I decided to sort of adjoin these together. This room, it just kind of looks like a party room, although in my build this sort of becomes the VIP area where if you're a VIP guest, this is your private room where you and your friends can have your own private bar, your own private bartender, sit around, have some drinks, and then you have access to the outside area as well. You can see that the outdoor party set includes two of the new items that were new to the luxury party stuff but have since been in several other packs including my wedding stories and high school years that includes a buffet table for parties where you can automatically load up food and also a drink fountain and then a couple of tables a couple of chairs a piece of outdoor art a little bit of bench seating in a red and white and black i love an alice in wonderland aesthetic so i'm happy with it luxury party stuff pack comes with a another banquet table it also comes with its own bar and bar seating and then it has curtains and then these large wall lights wall sconces but they look like they're backlit pieces of wall art these particular curtains are lighted curtains so i think they technically classify as light this is a prefabricated room so we're creating a doorway to actually getting into the rest of the club i'm thinking of making it kind of a big warehouse as most lounges slash clubs would be. However, I'm going to reserve space for a kitchen and obviously a bathroom, which is these two different rooms that I've just created. And before I really start building, I want to look at some of these assets. Here is the what is classed as a wall light, but actually looks like a big piece of art. And that comes in a couple of different colors. Got this tufted stool that goes along with the bar and the other furniture that has a tufted look. We have the shine bar, which is a lighted bar. It's too wide. And you can see that it sort of has has this illuminated hue for each swatch. As mentioned, the Fountain of Mirth is a new item for the luxury party stuff pack. You have this Banquetia Plateau, which is a banquet table, the modern version of the two banquet tables that we have with this pack. And then the second banquet table that we have, it's called the Fancy Feast Banquet Table. And this one has more of a layered tablecloth look. We have a new small dining table that's called Table Sequinas. Sequinas? Sequinas? <laughs> which is just a special occasion dining table that has a sequin tablecloth on it. There's only a certain amount of parties that this would be appropriate decor for. And then we have what could also potentially be one of the worst items that has ever been created, and that is the infamous boom cube, which is infamous because it's really big, and unfortunately it can't be sized up or sized down unlike several other items. And all the swatches don't completely fit all of the swatches for the rest of the furniture. You think that it would be a one-to-one -one color match, but that's not the case, unfortunately. In terms of seating, we have this Chiawal, Chiawal seat, which is a special occasion seat. I think that the draping on the back of the seat just gives so much wedding vibes. This comes in a variety of swatches. All right, now we're spending a little bit of time putting together our restroom in our kitchen. So in terms of the lot requirements for a lounge, but you can see that there's a couple of dining tables, a couple of dining chairs in terms of the requirements, as well as a bar, love seating, a toilet, a sink, a waste disposal, so some sort of trash bin, a stereo, a couple of bar stools, a microphone, and a musical instrument. I did decide, however, to have a full kitchen because as you know in The Sims 4 if you want to have weddings and birthdays where a cake would be necessary you may want to hire a caterer or if you really just want to spend some of your party time getting yourself in the kitchen and making that cake you can do that here. So we are decorating the kitchen. I kind of went for a 
mini industrial looking kitchen. Blue tiled walls kept everything else in terms of the kitchen counters and kitchen appliances is either silver or black and white, keeping it simple. Now we're going to go to the bathroom. It's going to be an all gendered bathroom with several stalls. We're going with this large counter. We're using some of the new wall sconce lights and I'm trying to figure out the placing there, but we're going to make this four individual stalls. Just trying to find a good mirror to use here. I'm going to have two sinks. If it's a nice venue, maybe they'd have some lotions for you to use. And here are going to be our four different stalls. Because I only wanted to keep this limited to base game and luxury party stuff so that it's available on the gallery for download and you really just need to own the Sims 4 base game and one more pack. Instead of using the bathroom stalls that are in high school years and I think are also in Discover University, these are basically four individual rooms completely closed off. There's no looking at people underneath the door to see if someone's there. I mean, it's literally a locked room with its own individual toilet and then just a communal place to wash your hands. You know, check yourself out in the mirror before you, you go back out to the lounge. Put a little runner underneath the sinks create a little bit of a homier vibe. All right, now we're going to go out to the lounge itself. The outside of it is just gonna be basically like one big large box. And just to make it a little bit more interesting, we're gonna make a smaller box next to it. And now we're trying to finish out the exterior. I'm thinking of having patio, maybe some columns, just to create some architectural interest on the outside. Because when you really look at it, it's just a big flat box. This luxury party vibe, it's a very particular aesthetic. It's not exactly my aesthetic, but I figured that we would lean into it and kind of go with an over the top glam look. We're gonna create a little bit of a second floor so we have kind of an overhang in the entrance. And this second floor sort of gives us an opportunity to sort of do that. And also some extra space for seating. If you were to play in this lot and you wanted to take a date here, it's sort of an area that would probably be sparsely populated. And you can have a little bit of private time with your date, creating some platforms on the top to give a little bit more visual interest so it doesn't look so flat. And then since we have the black and white alternate tile, on the outside. I thought it might be nice to bring the checkerboard Harlequin aesthetic to the front entrance as well. Now remember to put a couple of trash bins outside. Then we're going to put some of these lighting wall sconces on the outside as well. We're going to create a little mini stage area in this area right here. We're also going to repeat the Harlequin slash checkerboard pattern. And for the lot requirements, we're going to place a microphone here and then a music instrument. And I'm also going to put in these stereos. And I think they could sort of look like stage monitors because they're so big that you would usually find at a venue like this, but they also sort of just act as speakers. So it also fulfills the stereo requirement. I'm going to put some of these lighted curtains all in black around the periphery of the stage to sort of give it that curtained look. And then of course, some stage lights. Now we're going to create our bar area. So sort of the, envision the bar in the back because this wall is relatively big, but now now we're just finding things here and there that we could potentially put in the kitchen as potential decorative pieces. And then of course there's this large outdoor LED slash neon sign that could be used as a logo. So we're going to use that in the front. I'm just trying to figure out what sort of outdoor wall treatment I want to use. Sort of want to keep it dark, but I really can't find a good match between the wall texture and also the platform textures that we have available. You can kind of see that even though there is a vertical wood being used here, it's sort of two different but vaguely familiar shades and it just is sort of lit differently. So it doesn't look continuous like I want it to look. And then I'm going to accent a small portion of this build with a little bit of a gray tile to give a little bit more dimension. And here is the upstairs version of the overhang where it is providing a little bit of shade and a little bit of visual interest, but it also provides kind of a nice little date spot. We're going to be using a couple of love seats here and since there weren't a lot of reasons for me to use that boom cube, I guess this is where I'm sticking them. And at some point, I guess I went with a white and purple aesthetic. I hadn't really decided on what the interior colors were going to look like for the furniture, but I think this is where I decide I'm going to go with purple and create a stairway to the up 
upstairs location. <laughs> uh, there looks to be some sort of visual glitch with our doors, even though we selected a door that was usable with the lowest wall height. It looks like the door frame was popping up into the second floor. So we're gonna hide that with a couch and kind of pretend it's not there. Going back downstairs, we're going to create our bar area, sort of the liquor cabinets in the background, and then of course a long bar. I'm trying to figure out what the plants are gonna look like. These are technically indoor plants, but I think they would look really good outside. We're gonna create a little bit of a fountain area as so a bit of visual interest for the outdoor entrance. Initially, I had made it a pool, but then I remembered that I needed to reclassify it as a pond because if I left it as a pool, you know, one of your sims is gonna get into their swimsuit and start trying to swim laps in this one lane swimming pool. So wanted to avoid that if at all possible. Right now, I'm just trying to standardize my colors. You can see that I switched from the purple to the dark blue. I realized that the wall sconces didn't have a blue that really matched the rest of the lighted blue furniture that was provided. So I decided to go with white instead. And then we're just putting a couple of different seating areas in the lounge. There's not a ton of seating, which is why I created this extra bonus space upstairs. But I figured that you would still need some time to circulate around, order drinks at the bar. If you were going to look at the performances on stage, the, the Sims would probably gather around there and stand there and dance there and all that other stuff. So I didn't want the main floor to look overly crowded. We're going to be slipping here and there, but we need to put some finishing touches on the main floor. Figure out a wallpaper, figure out a floor tile, changing my swatches here and there to make sure everything kind of looks cohesive. And then I wanted to perhaps take a look at this bonus room that was a pre-created room. All of the furniture was originally sort of like a white and a beige. And I just didn't think that this particular color story fit the rest of the build. So I wanted to switch it out, maybe kind of concentrate on blue. Take a look at this kids. When you use the blue swatch on these particular chairs, it's broken. Especially if you move your camera around, it's really, really broken. So the unfortunate thing about a luxury party stuff pack is yeah, some of the swatches for some of the furniture, they're just not going to work or you're just going to have to deal with it looking slightly upsetting like that, which is what I'm doing here because I'm just going to roll with it. But do know that if you download this pack that you may want to switch it back to white or something kind of boring. But if EA is going to ship a game where some of the furniture looks like that, I'm going to use it. We've switched the swatches on the outdoor area. All right, here and back in the front entrance, I'm trying to create a sort of red carpet look so you can feel like you're having your red carpet moment as you're stepping into the lounge. But now we're doing a little bit more landscaping. So if you are outside, you have something sort of nice to look at with a topiary, a couple of hedges trimmed in the shape of various animals. Here's our base game light switch. And uh, we're putting a little cork board in the kitchen, sort of like the employee board that is supposed to be posted up at every workplace where it has the number of vacation days that you're supposed to be able to take information on workers' comp, all of that information kind of in a pretend cork board in the kitchen. Back in the entrance, we're putting a large fountain kind of off center. Now we're checking out what this place looks like in the dark and I think it looks pretty good. Okay, so now we're doing a little tour. We're going in through the front. We're taking a look at the restroom. Here is our main lounge area. I forgot to put bar stools, so we're popping those in. And there is the stage area with the microphone and the instruments and the stereo. And then you have our little VIP area where the thought is to rent it out or, you know, you're a VIP, you're a celebrity. You get put in that room versus mingling with the common sins of the world. And then there is the outdoor VIP area as well. Very small and intimate. All right, here is the second floor, just one large couch. If you want to get away, have a conversation. And then there is the little outdoor area above the entrance for you to snuggle up with your date. All right, so that is it for the speed build of the lounge using only luxury party stuff and the base game. I hope that you enjoyed the video. As you can see, it's a very 
particular aesthetic using luxury party stuff, very glam, very party centric. It's not the type of glam that works for a bedroom or your house. It's very related to parties. Maybe it's a high school prom or some sort of glam sequence laced wedding, but that's kind of the vibe. Again, if you want to check out my review of the luxury party stuff pack, you can watch that video here. That's all for today, kids. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, take care of yourselves. Bye!